Yeah. I don't know. All right. Hey. Hey. Oh, yeah. Um. Whoa. Guys, we made it. End of 2019, and cats didn't kill us. Welcome everybody to the uh, end of the year reviews. Um, I've been looking forward to this for a really long time because I love doing movie reviews. I love doing lists and everything as you've seen. And um, I, every year I always put out my um, top 10 you know, of the year uh, like everybody else does, but I'm really excited to do it with you guys this year. How I'm gonna do it is kind of like everybody else, do some honorable mentions and then I'll get right into my uh, top 10 here. Now, I do have my list because I just am not gonna memorize all that. Um, especially when I get to the end of the decade reviews. Oof. There's a few that I haven't seen yet. Um, they're kind of some big ones. Don't judge me. But they're Midsummer, The Irishman, Ad Astra, It Chapter 2, Marriage Story, Jojo Rabbit, 1917, and Cats. But yeah, so I haven't seen those yet. Um, as of the making of this, I might have seen them by the time it actually comes out. So before I start, I just want to make a disclaimer that um, for my obviously for my movie reviews and for these lists and you know end of the years and the decades list um th these are my personal opinions obviously and they're subjective i'm doing more of what my favorite movies were rather than what i think was the best because i i, I don't think you can compare movies like that obviously it's easier sometimes like if you're like oh uh schindler's list and the room but i think that overall when you're comparing your top of the year it's hard to compare in terms of what is the best because you're comparing apples and oranges here so these are all going to be my subjective uh favorites and same with the the end of the decade reviews they're going to be my favorites even though there's going to be a lot in this list and in that list that should have been on um the top 10 in, in place of maybe another so i just wanted to make that disclaimer but let's just start off with the uh, honorable mentions here so the first one we got is aladdin just kind of like all the other Disney live actions so far, it's kind of getting a little stale, but still some cool effects and Will Smith. The Lego Movie, the second part, Captain Marvel, Zombieland Double Tap, and Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. I will have my review out on that at the beginning of the year. I have some thoughts. I will leave it at that. So now we are into the uh, top 10 here, and this will be in order. So at number 10, Toy Story 4. This was, I think, a really great wrap up uh, to the series. I it was one of those that was it did it wasn't necessary. Um, we could have definitely left it at three, but I understand why they made a fourth. It seemed like they had a purpose for it. Considering they could have made it just as a let's do another one, I think they really did a good job with it. I did have some problems with it in terms of um, Buzz seemingly being stupid and also not in the movie a whole lot. I know it was kind of Woody's movie this time, but I feel like they really sidelined Buzz on that. But still a really great movie, incredible animation, and that is why it's my number 10. Number nine is Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. I don't think I loved it as much as other people did, but I do recognize that it is a great Another great film by Quentin Tarantino, um, and I was invested pretty much the whole time. I honestly, if I'm being honest, I don't think I saw the point of making it as much as other people might have, but it definitely was a good look at this decade and a kind of a nostalgic thing and um, just overall kind of an interesting piece to watch. But it is lower on, on my on my top ten list just because of of that reason that I I thought it wasn't as captivating um, as some of his other ones. Uh, number eight, Spider Man Far From Home. Um, definitely still like the first one better, but this one was really really good. I actually, funny enough, um, <clears throat> almost forgot it was a Spider Man movie at one point because I was so invested in just the trip part of it, the vacation. And I honestly like like the, this is like like John Hughes movies, and I was honestly almost would have been okay if it was just these kids on a vacation a class a school vacation um because that was really fun to watch but of course then you get the spider-man aspects and you get all the new suits and everything and, and the villain it's actually interesting it has good motivation um so overall i thought it was really well done 
Number seven, Rocket Man. This one surprised me. I saw Bohemian Rhapsody and I really loved it. And after seeing Rocket Man, I definitely love this one more. Um, this song's makes are, it fit perfectly in with the narrative. It's kind of weird. And the choreography, the, the dance number, I mean, this movie is just riveting. And it actually has, I think, even more emotion than Bohemian Rhapsody did. It has a, a, a better story to it. Uh, and, and I just, overall, I, I really love this. It was, it was artsy, but also really fun to watch. Number six, and, and this is so hard that this is number six, because I love this movie. If you see my review on it, A Beautiful Day in the Neighborhood, such a good movie very experimental but definitely did not waste a moment tom hanks of course portrays mr rogers wonderfully and overall this movie was just one of the most wholesome movies i've seen in a while and just one of the best of this year but that i think tells you how good these other ones are if that's number six number five dr sleep i love the shining and it was very very cool to be able to see a lot of those shots in theaters on the big screen even if it was kind of a, a remake here and there it did have its own original story you see my review on it i thought it was great i loved it it was very exciting to watch number four us one of the most original movies i've seen that's why i love jordan peele because he's making original things even if it doesn't make sense all the time like us um <clears throat> i'm not putting it top on the top of this list um because of it's making sense because there are parts where it doesn't i'm putting it on the list because of the experience i have watching it <clears throat> and because the idea is very cool and original it's not just a sequel or a remake or a reboot it was interesting and it really got people talking and i just the the whole aesthetic of it was really cool so i i really loved watching us even if it didn't make sense the whole way through i think that's okay sometimes kind of like the shining Here's the top three, and these were hard to order, but I, I think I think I got it. Number three, Joker. <sighs> this movie is um, such an emotional ride, and it's very tolling, but it was so well done. Todd Phillips did a very good job, and uh, people saying that it glorifies violence so it shouldn't have been made. I, I personally was wondering how they were going to do it. How do you make a protagonist who you resonate with and you feel bad for, but also does all these terrible things? And I think they rode that line pretty well. Definitely, you know, a lot of controversy, a lot of people talking about it, a lot of discussion, but I think that's okay because I think that is what the movie intended, was a lot of discussion. It could have just been an origin story for a comic book character, and it wasn't. It took something that we all love and something that everybody would go to see and put out messages about mental health and, and, and how we treat each other and got people talking over it. It used that leverage it had to give a greater meaning to the story. And um, also just really surprising moments. By the time I had seen it, I had not been in a movie that much since like Endgame. Number two, funny enough, is Avengers Endgame. One of my most interesting experiences in a movie um, because the beginning of it, I just, I, I wanted to walk out because I had had a lot of expectation for it and I had a lot of, like everybody else, theories of what was going to happen and, I, and I, that movie made me learn to not do that for big movies like this is that you can have those theories and expectations but if they don't pan out, just go along with the ride because the more I thought about it, the more a lot of things made more sense. And yeah, this movie has some problems. Yeah, I liked Infinity War more than Endgame, but oh my god, the ending, um, that that scene. If you still haven't seen it, I'm not going to say it, but you know the scene. Um, one of the one of the most excited I've ever been in a theater, and I absolutely just the whole thing my heart was pounding people next to me were crying it's insane how this has come up to such a, a culmination um but it, it did a very good job i think of kind of if it was going to be a, a three-hour movie and that's it and not a tv show or something to really expand on all these things i think it did they did a very good job um in terms of trying to wrap some stuff up here and we are up to number one
And if it wasn't going to be Endgame, because that was probably the most exciting, like I said, but I think there was a movie this year that, from what I've seen, was very well done, was fun, was also serious. It took itself seriously. Overall, was just a great movie that I had a very enjoyable experience with, and that was Knives Out. Ryan Johnson he d did it again. Um, I'm not going to say that he bounced back from Last Jedi because Last Jedi like wasn't bad critically, um, it, just in terms of the canon and stuff, but he, he really proved himself on this one because this was a very fun movie. It was a nice throwback to your old murder mysteries um, and I re you know, references to Clue and it was just fun, but it was also well done, but it also didn't get too serious and it was fun but it took itself seriously like it was just a perfect mix of everything and i think that's why this year's best movie for me was knives out okay guys so uh yeah that's it that's that's the end of the year reviews um stay tuned for the end of the decade which will be following shortly after i'm very excited about it um put a lot of work into that one um it's going to be very interesting to to see what's on that list, I think. So as always, uh, keep your hopes high, your stress low, and movies right in the middle.